Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly appreciate you guys. To all my subscribers new, I am glad that you guys are here. Um, and those that's been here for a while, I appreciate you all as well. To, uh, to those of you that just visit and check me out every now and then, um, hello. I appreciate you guys as well. All right, guys. So, you know, the Lord has just laid something on my heart. Oh, and do be sure to check out my playlist, guys. If you hit my videos tab, you're going to see my videos as I've uploaded them. My playlist tab in there, you'll see a bunch of different videos that I have by categories that will help you to get familiar with my channel, what it's about. And it will answer a lot of questions. I've recently added one about toxic relationships. So that should be something you can, you guys can check out. I'm still adding videos to them as I'm searching across my channels, my channel for different videos that I, that I've taught on or I've done prophecy on. So just check it out. All right, guys. So the Lord has given me something to share today. And it is this, if they have no rule over their own spirit, they cannot lead you. If a person has no rule over their own spirit, they cannot lead you. God's children, it's time for us to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oftentimes you see wrong right in your face. And I'm not talking about people that make mistakes, okay? People make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But people that are led by the spirit of God will not keep making the same malignant mistakes over and over again especially when it comes to other people when anyone is in in a position of leadership they are ex they are expected to be held at a higher standard so you can't be hemming and hawing and making the the mistakes as the same mistake as a brother or sister in christ that's new to christ or even someone that's been in for a while when God puts you before people, there's a certain level of responsibility and accountability that you are held to. So my brothers and sisters, the word of God says that we are supposed to, we will know people by their fruit, by their fruit. But many times God's children will think mm, it's too, that's too simple, right? You're waiting for them to really do something worse <laughs> before you understand what God is trying to show you know them by their fruit not isolated incidents my brothers and sisters okay but and some isolated incidents are incidents that they don't need to be a repeat you know depending on what it is especially like if it's something in you know some sort of sexual violation or something like that certain things whether it's isolated or not it's big all right but you have to use discretion with that but my brothers and sisters, God is calling his children to trust in the Lord more than you are trusting in man. That means you have a point of reference, which is the word of God, and you measure them by the word, period, okay? And you measure them also, God will give you discernment of what's right or wrong because there's certain things that, yes, the word says this, but you will also get further you get little, you, <laughs> the Holy Spirit gives you the fine print that you don't see there in the word of God, right? But this comes with a relationship with Jesus Christ, a relationship with the Lord, not getting closer to a leader, not getting closer to somebody else, not just listening to me all the time. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ. So the word is, my brothers and sisters, they can't lead you if they have no control over their own spirit. Proverbs 25 and 8 says, Like a city that is broken into and without walls is a man who has no control over his spirit. Now somebody might be funny and say, oh, they're talking about men. No, <laughs> we're all man. We're all man. There's man and there's woman, but we're all M-A-N, okay, before God. So both male and females, like a city that is broken into and without walls, is a man who has no control over his spirit. And that's the New King James Version. The King James Version says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is as a city broken down without walls. What is a city without walls like? Number one, it's unstable. Number one, there's no protection and any and anybody can come in and out. It's subject to the elements. Anything, it's subject to the elements. So if it's raining, 
you know, uh, or if it, and it's there's a flood going on, guys. It's going to flood the city. The city don't have any walls. If if there's enemies outside, it, they're going to be coming in and coming out. There will be no defense, no line of defense, okay? Nothing in place, nothing to separate the city from what's outside the city. You're not going to be able to tell the difference because any and anybody can come in. You see, if the enemy is outside the city or within the city, you don't know what side they're on, okay, or where the city belongs to because there are no clean lines to separate the two. So if the enemy is in the city, then maybe they are with the enemy or maybe the city belongs to the enemy. If the enemy is without, you still can't really tell because they're not really without. There's no, there's no line, there's no wall to separate to say you are on the outside or on the inside. So that will be the characteristic of a person who has no rule over their own spirit. They're subject to whatever. They're open and they will invite anything. Mood swings, attitude, nasty ways, backbiting. They're subject to all the elements of the works of the flesh. And so that's why you find this person, this man or woman of God, that's at the end, the D on the end, man, woman of God, supposedly, that acts just as scandalous as the next person. They are always rude. They are always disrespectful. They are always falling into situations with their flesh. They have problems um, sharing their platforms. You know, they can't, they're not open to anyone teaching they are just subject to whatever whims, whims of their emotion, whether it's lust, anger, jealousy, strife, malice, anything they feel like doing. When they feel it, they just flow with it. They have no walls. This is why you find people can go to church and be nasty to one another. A whole week has transpired, first lady. A whole week has transpired, has transpired, Pastor Bishop. A whole week has transpired, man or woman of God, deacon, whether you're a leader or whether you are, uh, you are just going to church as a Christian. One week has transpired and you can still come into church with that same nasty attitude, still ignoring that person, still walking by them, still preaching shade. You mean a week has passed and you, you haven't changed? And if you have midweek Bible study, they still know how to step right by you and don't speak to you and be nasty and do whatever and act like they don't see you and turn off the mic on you and, and do all these things. Guys, this is a person who has no rule over their spirit. And if they have no rule over their own spirit, they're not fit to, they're not fit to lead. They're not fit to lead. I don't care what title they have. They can't stop themselves from cheating on their wife or on their husband they can't stop this situation that's occurring they can't stop uh sexting and texting this other man they can't leave that man's wife alone they can't leave this woman's husband alone they're lusting and looking at your kids they are stealing money out the offering plates they're fudging the 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 uh, the ledger. There should be two people, at least two, maybe even more, that can give an account for the money to show what's there, and they all agree on it. But they don't have to. It's just them. They're the ones that's looking over the money, or them and their other little shady friend that they're in cahoots to steal. A person who does not have control over their spirit cannot lead you. And you need to learn to put your trust and your hand in God, put your hand in God's hand because this is why so many people are led away in ministries and by people because it scares them to think, oh, well, if I'm not in church or if I'm not in some kind of church, something will happen to me. Oh, if I'm not here, something will happen to me. I'm not telling you guys that you're supposed to be a lone ranger. There's some of us, God has called us out and others, you are there, but you better believe you're not there to follow the, the crowd and going down the broad path. You may be there to make the difference. 
okay? And other times you're there because you're afraid to go anywhere else. You're afraid to step out and to be with the Lord by yourself because you've been taught that that's wrong. James 1 and 8 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all, in all his ways. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you, a person that preaches the word and lives a different way is a double-minded man. A person that says one thing in this, a, a person who's a preacher and, and, and you're a Christian in this environment, but over here, you know, you putting your hand up somebody's skirt, you're double-minded. If in this area you're teaching about um, how a husband is supposed to treat his wife, but at home you're dogging out your wife, you're unstable. If in this setting you're teaching about the wife submitting to a husband, but you at home cussing out your husband, you're, un you're I'm sorry, you're double-minded. So for all the scenarios that I just gave, double-minded, okay? If you're preaching and you're reading and you're raising your hand and saying, yes, Lord, I understand when it says we're supposed to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and you're seeing that, you're seeing that on a choir, on a praise team about living holy and being clean vessels, but then you at home or you back at the house or over at somebody's house, boot up, chilling and watching Netflix, you're double-minded. Because what did you just sing about? What did you just shout and praise about? What did you just shout and fall out and hit your head on the, on, on the steps and lay down and your shoe came off and there is still you know, search worn out for the shoe. You're doing all of this in one environment, and but you're over here living like a hellion. Give me a clean heart. You'll sing that all day. But over here, you're thinking dirty. You're riding dirty. As a matter of fact, you're cussing people out. Real dirty. That's a double-minded man. So you cannot lead. That's why children get frustrated with their parents. When you're going to church, you're dragging them to church. They don't even want to go. So to them, it's like you're dragging them to church and Bible study. You're doing all these things. You're, you're making them get involved in different things, but they see you living a different life. Guys, it's not just about because I said so. We've got to set the example. Be led by the Holy Spirit, not by nobody else. Don't let people say, ain't nobody perfect. Nobody's perfect, but you shouldn't be living to be imperfect so you can bank on grace. Jesus says, be ye perfect as I am perfect. So as close as possible, as close to perfection as possible in this human body, Jesus will show you how to do this. And it doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't mean as long as we're in this flesh, we'll make mistakes. But it, mean, it means you will not live to make mistakes. You will not justify your sins. You will not be unrepentant. You won't be trying to put a spin on the word. You will desire the things of God. Lord, I messed up. I for, Lord, forgive me. I come before you. And I'm telling you, as you stay in the presence of the Lord, you will change. But guys, that may be another video. So let me tie this up here. A man who has no rule, a man or a woman who has no rule over their own spirit cannot lead you. Watch the fruit of who is leading you and be led by the Holy Spirit accordingly. If they don't care about themselves, and I'm gonna throw this out here too. Some of you, your marriages where this person has gone out and they've had unprotected sex, unprotected sex and has brought some things home or had or had some other stuff. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you, see if that man or that woman don't care enough about their health. They're not going to care about yours. If they don't care about their eternity with Jesus Christ, they're not going to care about yours. I can't tell you what to do in your individual relationships, but I will tell you, you need to seek the Lord and truly hear what God is telling you and not what you want to hear, but what he tells you. We must be on one accord, oneness with Christ, oneness with Jesus Christ. So for those of you that's doing this, get before the Lord and repent, repent and go before him. Let him teach you how to be stable, not unstable. Let him teach you how to be a city fortified 
by his walls, not scattered, because you can't be trusted when you're like this. You're not fit to lead when you're like this. And you may bogart and put yourself up in the lead, but everyone around you, everyone around you, those who eyes are those whose eyes are opened up, they know you're not fit to lead. And that's why they will move and they'll leave. And there'll be isms and schisms because what's at the head is going to come down. You double-minded, you're here and there, and you're laying hands on people, and you're still refusing to submit to the Father. You're going to bring that mess into your congregation and around the people and in your household. And then God's going to hold you accountable for it because someone stray away and fall away because of you. You can't afford that. Their blood will be on your hands. Get right with the Lord. My brothers and sisters, Use God's wisdom and stop looking at a person and their title and what they say. I don't care how big the church is, okay, or how big, how well known they are, how popular, how much money they have. You will know them by their fruit. And if they're double minded, if they are unstable, nothing unstable will you be able to stand on. Nothing unstable will you be able to find support in. Anything unstable, if you're in it and you're around it, everything will collapse. Not only on them, but on you. And not only on you, but your house and your generations. Because it's spiritual. Alright guys, I hope this makes sense. Bye!